Hello there. Today I am at El Ma El Malpais, which is kind of like Badlands in Spanish, National Monument here in central New Mexico. And this actually the CDT goes right around this national monument. And there's actually a road that's also called Chain of Craters Backcountry Byway. And it's just a gravel road that goes pretty much around the southwest and end of the National Monument goes by some of the craters. The CDT goes to the left and sometimes to the right, it zigzags. So I'm just going to actually drop off a gallon of water at one parking lot and I'm just going to cruise the byway. And as we hit north, there's actually a national forest there. So I'm going to camp out there tonight, but that's a goal. I'm just going to cruise around today. There are no trees here. So there's really nowhere we can sit because the sun is still super strong it's may 12th ish i think and um yeah the sun is super strong so you need shelter or shade during the day uh, at least the car does so yeah i'm just gonna cruise around and uh, we'll see what we can see to the left is not national monument to the right is national monument for most of the byway in fact actually to the right is wilderness area so we'll fly the drone around a little west of the road left of the road but not across the road and should be fine so let's go check out some of these craters i'm just heading down this one dirt road right now oh, there's a car coming i'll let him go so i could uh you know be an irresponsible vlogger and uh sit but at least i pulled over at least to make this intro right but uh, i'll talk to you later once we get to the craters here's my phone in the dock and it's the national monument photo this car is so unbelievably dusty. Every once in a while, just huge gust of dust comes into the car. And no matter how much they dust it, it just gets dustier and dustier. But look at that. All right, so let's go. It's always nice when you don't have to open a gate. Nice. The CDT goes right by this road right here and it looks like there's maybe half a gallon cast here. I don't have too much water so I can't refill it. But there's some good water sources around here so I won't worry about that too much. But yeah, the trail's right here and you can see the road is right there. We're pretty much paralleled for quite a while, but uh, yeah. Up ahead is a windmill water source. In fact, there's some prairie dogs running around in front of my car. <laughs> I didn't know they were around here. Yep, go in your holes. Okay, so that's a uh, water source. The CDT is well off to the right, but the, this is one of the water sources that they count on. So I'm gonna actually go check it out. There hasn't been a report on gut hooks in 10 days or so. So I'm gonna go take a look and update gut hooks with a recent report. Supposedly it's good, but I don't know. We'll see. A lot of groundhogs out there. Prairie hog, prairie dogs, I mean. Let's go check it out. Prairie dog hole. And that looks like it's supposed to be a windmill. Oftentimes these things, the windmill portion has run down so they'd replace them with solar panels, but this one doesn't have any solar panels. I'll check out what the water looks like though. It's not very windy today, which is amazing actually, because it's usually pretty windy. Big tank and several small ones. The small ones on the left do not look promising at all. Wow, this big one looks pretty full. It's just a huge surface area. So even if it's only a foot deep, that's a lot of water. Wow, that's pretty good water. Not too many floaties. That is a lot of water. I don't know what these brown things are floating here. <laughs> they look like floating cow patties or something, but that's a lot of water. That's pretty good. The CDT comes from that way, going northbound. 
And this is the parking lot. It's not much of a parking lot, really, but uh, there's a sign. CDT continues this way. But off to the left is a water cache I found. So here's the water cache. There's a lot of empty jugs, but I left one gallon for Pocket Rocket. And I refilled one of these, so that's at least another gallon I'll leave behind. So now there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven and a half public, and a gallon for Tina. And that will be public after she arrives. So I put the ETA on there and whatnot. And uh, there's another jug there. I'm going to grab it and try to put it with the rest of them. And it looks like some hiker left their trash here. I just don't have room for trash. If I was going to go to town today, I might take it. I just don't have much room for trash. And there's also a little bin here for miscellaneous hiking things. I guess there's some soap, lip balm, sunblock, plastic forks, and a variety of bars and some stuff. But uh, I'm not going to go digging around in there just because it's... I don't like touching stuff if I don't have to. <laughs> I'll go grab that thing and move it closer. Um, I don't know if you know, but a lot of times with water caches, they do tie ropes through it. Because when the winds pick up, it'll blow things all over. A lot of these aren't tied in, but there's not enough rope. And a lot of them are, are garbage. Again, if I had space, I'd take some garbage away. But I just don't have space to take these things. Even if you crush them, they just take so much space. Originally, I told Tina that I'd hide it somewhere. Um, so no other hikers would just steal it. But there's enough water here. And... This is the longer route to Grant. A lot of people are taking the shorter road walk. So I think there's a lot less people going this way than the other way. Um, and with that much water, that should last two days at least. I'm always gauging that a hiker will take about a gallon, a little less, um, if they are relying on this water source. And the next water source is like 16 miles away. They'll probably take at least three liters and there's a little bit of waste and maybe people chug a liter before they go. So that should hold hold everyone over for a little while. Hopefully there's water for Tina when she gets here tomorrow. But she'll get here tomorrow morning and I don't think there's going to be like 10 hikers coming through within a 24 hour period. So I think we're safe. I don't think I have to hide it any place weird and nobody will take her water. So I think we're good to go. I'm going to get in the car. I'm actually going to fly a drone around this field here. Just kind of check it out. Wilderness area is to the right. So I should be able to fly it legally. No problem. So here we go. One part of driving through public land is every once in a while you're gonna have to go through a gate. So you gotta get out, open it, drive through, and then close it. A lot easier with two people, I'll say that much. I'm at about mile 472.4 and the CDT is off that way. I came to just do a check on a water source because there's nothing updated for 10 days, which is a long time. But this water source looks good. In fact, there's like a little float valve on it and I think it stays at this level. It's quite amazing. There's a slight leak in it. You can tell by all the mud, but I guess it's still filled up enough. So it works great. And the other great part about this water source is look at this gigantic tree. It's super nice. It hangs over. There's some small dead branches, but the spot below it is just super wide open. You could totally just lay out here, take a break, 
He could set up a whole bunch of tents even early in the day or midday just to avoid the sun. It's a pretty nice, nice spot. I'm at this campsite now in uh, National Forest just north of the uh, National Monument. And uh, I, I spotted it out on the satellite pictures in Google Maps and I thought it was good. And I drove up here and it's pretty good. It's, it's just a huge spot with drive throughs the, uh, the only bad thing is it's like uh, most of the spots are inclined, so it's kind of not ideal. But I think a lot of people come here to target shoot. I found a lot of shotgun shells and there was obviously targets up the hills because I'm basically in a depression surrounded by hills except the road that comes in here. So I'm hoping nobody comes up here that wants to shoot or something and I don't know. It's Thursday so I don't know, maybe after work they'll come or try to come. But hopefully it's more of a campsite than a shooting range. The one good thing I guess is that the price of ammo is so high that people aren't just going to go somewhere and just shoot off hundreds of rounds or some people might rich people but most people won't these days but i thought i'd just share with you this campsite as you can see behind me everywhere it's just hills hills 